Hi, my name is Nandan Sangani, and I'll be going over Lab 1 of Physics 2212, which is titled Charge Tapes. For some background info on the topic, the interaction between ordinary objects can create an excess or deficiency in electrons, resulting in a net positive or negative charge. This interaction can include rubbing, pulling apart, or even touching. The objective of this lab was to create charged pieces of tape and to observe the interactions between the tapes and other objects. The goal was to determine the charge of the charged tapes and to calculate the number of excess or deficient electrons creating that charge. The calculations from the lab data resulted in a tape charge of 1.86 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs, with an electron deficiency of 1.16 times 10 to the 11th electrons. The main physics principles used in the lab include Coulomb's law, which quantifies the electric force between charged particles. Coulomb's law also tells us that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. The lab also highlights Newton's laws of motion, including the second law, which states that force equals mass times acceleration, and the third law, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Finally, the lab follows the law of conservation of charge, which states that charge cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. The method followed to produce this lab involves charging a piece of tape. First, cut a 20 centimeter piece of tape and stick it to a smooth, flat surface. Then, cut another tape of equal size and fold a small portion over itself to create a handle. Label this tape as the U-tape and stick it over the base tape smoothly. Next, using the handle, quickly pull the U-tape off the base tape. To test the charge, hang the U-tape off the edge of a desk and bring your hand near. If the tape is attracted to the hand, it is charged. Similarly, you can test the specific charge by rubbing a plastic pen through your hair to negatively charge the pen. Then, hold the pen near the U-tape. If the tape is attracted to the pen, it is either positively charged or neutral due to Coulomb's law. In order to test U-tape interactions, first set two equally sized objects near each other on a table. Then place the U-tape over top each other, bridging the gap so it's hanging in between the two objects. Next, hold the second charged U-tape by the ends and bring it below the first tape. Slowly move that tape closer to the upper tape until the upper tape begins to float upwards. Measure the distance when the tape first begins to float. We will use this distance to determine the charge of the tape. The lab is constructed based on certain assumptions. We are treating the charges along the piece of tape as a single point charge, positioned in the center of the tape. We are also assuming each charged piece of tape we created has the same net charge, evenly distributed along the tape. We are then assuming the air resistance is a negligible force on the tapes, and that rubbing a pen in the hair causes it to become negatively charged. During the lab, some observations were made about the interactions between the tapes. The two main forces that were acting on the upper charged tape in the y direction include the electric force from the lower charged tape pointing upward, as well as the gravitational force pulling the tape downward. Since the momentum of the upper tape was not changing during the experiment, it can be assumed that these two forces were equal due to Newton's second law. The measurements of the tape include the length, width, and mass, which are all shown on the slide. The measured distance between the floating charged tapes was 0 0.04 of meters. The calculations from the experiment for the upper charged tape include the force of gravity, which is 0.001962 newtons in the y direction, the surface area, which was 0.004 meters squared, and the electric force from the lower tape on the upper tape, which was equal in magnitude to the force of gravity due to the net force on the tape being zero. For the final calculations for the results of the lab, the tape charge was calculated to be 1.86 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. The number of atoms on the tape came out to be 4 times 10 to the 17th atoms, and the total number of deficient electrons worked out to be 1.16 times 10 to the 11 electrons. The ratio of deficient electrons to atoms was 1 electron to 3.4 times 10 to the 6th atoms. This lab can also be modeled using GlowScript. The upper tape is the point charge labeled B, and the lower tape is the point charge labeled A. The model displays the force of gravity pulling the tape downwards, as well as electric force from the lower tape pushing the upper tape upwards. The calculations were also made using GlowScript and are the same as previously mentioned. To summarize, the charged tapes were positively charged with the charge of 1.86 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs, calculating using Coulomb's law. They were concluded to be positive since they were attracted to the negatively charged pen and they repelled each other when put near each other. From this, it was concluded that there is 1.16 times 10 to 11 fewer electrons on charged tape rather than neutral tape based on the fact that a deficiency of electrons creates a positive charge. To reflect, if electrons and protons switch signs, the magnitude of the charge for the charge tape would still be the same, and only the sign would switch. The tapes would still repel each other due to having light charges, and they would still attract the pen and neutral objects, such as a hand, due to polarization and attracting opposite charges. It was also concluded that it's important to handle the charge tapes as little as possible. 
This is because the charge tapes are deficient in electrons and the interaction with other objects would cause electron transfer, which would lose the charge of the tape. This is due to the law of conservation of charge as the electrons would transfer to the object with fewer electrons. Thank you for watching.